In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a lo-fi sampler using the ISD8820 chip. Uh, this is a common sampler chip, um, and I've added a couple little tweaks to it um, and some other interesting little things. Um, and we're going to be using what we covered in the last two videos and adding to that and then putting a sampler on it and then playing around. So. Uh, let's get to it. I'll show you the materials you need and then how to put it together. You're gonna need some wire, some wire strippers, we're gonna use some capacitors and resistors, and as in the other videos, I'm just using the most common values, 110, 100K, uh, and 1M, and for capacitors, I'm gonna be using 0.1 microfarad, one microfarad, 10. Um, we're also gonna be using a couple different ICs. Uh, we're gonna use the ISD1820. This is a really common and really cheap voice recording IC, so maybe like a buck 50, or even cheaper. Uh, and then again, like in the last two videos, we're gonna use the CD4106 um, and the CD4040. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to need a breadboard and a power supply. I'm using the ohm synth here. Um, so I've got two breadboards and my power supply, a speaker, and a couple controls. I'm going to wire up all these to control different parts of the sampler. Um, and we'll probably add, a, add some lights and some other stuff. I also have this touchpad that I'm using to create some different uh, looping and uh, rhythmic effects. You can use anything that conducts, and you'll need some banana or some alligator clips to clip to those. So let's get started. First, we're going to need our ISD chip. So we'll put that over here, and then we're going to build a couple oscillators and a divider. And if you don't know how to do that, then watch the last two videos. Look at the schematics and you will then know how to do that. Um, so this, this circuit really is building on what I did over the last two projects. So um, now I'm just gonna build a couple of oscillators. Okay, so I've got my two oscillators. I've got a audio frequency and a sub audio. And you can see the sub audio is blinking and, or my LFO, I guess, is blinking here, and then we can hear the audio oscillator. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm gonna wire this over to the divider. So I'm gonna take my LFO output, and I'm gonna plug that into the clock input of my 4040. Um, so there's my 4106. I've got my second oscillator, and I'm just gonna plug that out into the clock in. Um, and as always, look in the uh, description and you'll find data sheets and schematics. Okay, so now we can see that the clock is being divided and we can see the subdivisions there. So the red is the LFO and the blue is, uh, sorry, the blue are the different subdivisions. Um, on the ohm synth, I've got three LED drivers, so that's how I'm able to plug this directly into um, into an LED. And it's just as simple as a transistor that goes to an LED through a resistor to ground. So if you feel like building your own, then there you go. 1K, and that's your LED. And this is a 2N3904. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to put this aside for now, and we're going to build our sampler. And when we're done building the sampler, we're going to connect the rest of it to that. Okay, so now we've got the sampler going. Uh, I made a mistake by powering it straight from the wall power. Don't do that, I blew up this chip. Um, you have to use five volts. So don't 
make the mistake I made. Plus 5 BDC only. So now I have a sampler that's sampling my voice. So now I have a sampler that's sampling my voice. And I can change the pitch. Um, and I can use touch sensors to do that. Touch, touch sensors, touch sensors. So you can change the pitch like that. It has sort of a tape sound. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug this into a touch panel. Um, as I said before, you can use anything, any kind of conductive material. Um, so we could take, let's say, a pair of scissors and an alligator clip. And we're going to plug this in to the pitch point, which is pin number 10 on the chip. And I'm going to clip that to these scissors. And then I'm going to connect this to positive. And now I so I can touch with one hand I'm touching positive and with the other I'm just touching the pitch base. Um, so one thing I want to do first is uh, work with the pitch control because I think this is a really cool feature. So I can lower it down to about there. <clears throat> but I want to make it lower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this potentiometer, I'm going to add a resistor to positive. So we've got the pitch point in the middle, we've got negative on the right, and on the left we have a positive through a 1M resistor. So now I have a bigger suite, but that's still not low enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two 1M resistors in parallel. Uh, you could just use a 500K or 470K, um, but I don't have them and I want to keep it simple, so I'm just using these two resistors in parallel. Um, and I will put them in here. And now you can hear I can go all the way down. Like all the way down. Oh, this is pretty glitchy. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, here's one special note. Uh, if you record when the pitch is too high or too low, it will not really work. And a lot of the time it just doesn't work. But uh, now I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to talk and we'll see what happens. Um, one other thing that's important to note is this resistor lets you bring the pitch all the way down. But what it does that's a little weird is when you record and you play it back, it's a little higher than the actual recording. And if I don't have that there, then it plays the right pitch, but you don't have as much range. So this is just for you to decide what you want to do. You have options. Um, so I'm going to put it back in. Okay. So now I can go all the way down. So there's the first thing. And then we've got our pitch control here. Okay, now how do we make the sample play? Um, the, the way that it works is you've got two inputs. One is trigger activated, so that means if you give it a high signal, it plays the whole signal, the whole sample. But the other one is it will play as long as it's connected, for the most part. It, this whole thing is pretty glitchy. But um, <clears throat> Now there is in the spec sheet, for people that read that, you'll see that there's a loop feature that you can do, which is if you take the output, this is the little light that tells you when the sample is done. Um, if you send that back into the, the trigger activated, it will loop, but I don't like to use that because when you record a sample, it doesn't start on its own, so you need to trigger it. So instead of doing that, what I do is I take the trigger activated uh, sample play and I just plug it in to one of the oscillators I built earlier. So now it's just going. No matter what, it's always just going to go. 
Um, I've got, still got my pitch control here. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you two more things. Um, one is we're going to feed this oscillator into this so we can sample the microphone and if we want to build a sound circuit and put a, a, a looper in it, we can do that. We can just take the sound from this and feed it right in. Um, and the next one I'm going to show you is how to use this uh, divider to make rhythms. So first I'm going to show you how to use the 4040 chip, which I talked about a whole bunch in the last video, um, to create sort of a beat slicer effect. Um, and that's basically where we're going to hear the sound. So I'm going to record a, a straight tone so that you can uh, so that you can hear the modulation. So, oops, I'm going to turn the pitch down. Okay, so there's me whistling, and then so now that's the pitch bass, and if I touch positive, the pitch goes down. But then I'm going to take the LFO and I'm going to plug that into this touch panel, so you'll hear the pitch will go up and down at the rate of the LFO. So you can do some interesting stuff with that already. Um, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to keep adding more subdivisions. So on this chip, you can see you've got the clock in, then you have the divide by 2, divide by 4, 8, 16, 32. So I'm going to add a few more of those. So I'm going to put them into other touch panels. And there we go. And then that's the divide by 8. And maybe we'll add the divide by 16 as well. Okay. And now we turn that back up. So there's the LFO. So you can hear the different. And then we will slow that down a teeny bit. And then you can start to get really interesting patterns by combining them. So this is at dividing by 8, uh, combined with the straight clock, and then we'll add And then if I add all of them, you'll get a sort of ramp effect. And then, and then I can lift my finger from any one of those and change it. So you can get a bunch of different weird effects. Um, and I can record new samples as I go. Long, I can record a longer sample of me talking. get a more sort of tape sound. So we've got, uh, I'm going to record another sample. Uh, let's, okay, I'm going to add a capacitor to the pitch bass. And let's move this down. And now what will happen is the pitch larger capacitor, so that was a 10 microfarad, um, let's try 100, this will be plenty large, um, and you'll hear that the pitch will go up and down really slowly, so, So, which I think sounds sort of like a tape player that's laboring or speeding up, slowing down. Okay. Um, 
Now I'm going to show you how to plug a sound from another source uh, into the sampler. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna use an oscillator on the board and I'm gonna wire it into the input with the mic so I can still use the mic at the same time. Um, but I'm gonna have to drastically reduce the volume of this first. Um, so I'm gonna wire that up now. Um, I've taken the output of this oscillator um, taking the output of this oscillator I've run it up to this potentiometer and I have one side of the pot wired to ground uh, and the other side is the input from the oscillator so oscillator in and then the output I have going through a really big voltage divider because I need to drastically reduce the volume of this. So this is 100K and this is 1K to ground. And that's reducing it by 100 times. And then the output goes through a 0.1 microfarad cap and then into the microphone input of the chip, which is pin number four um, right here. Well, you can't see it there, but I'll, you can look in the schematics. Um, and then from here, the output <clears throat> of the potentiometer, uh, I run that to the input of my mixer. So I can hear, I can hear the synth. And that also controls the volume of the synth going into the sampler. So. So if I now record, and then I turn down the volume of my synth, oh, you can hear me talking, that was me, and now, now I can chop it up, and make a beat. So it's a cool little sampler, it's cheap, uh, it's easy to build. This took me, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes. Um, it's very lo-fi, it clicks a lot. When the sample loops, there's a little space of silence. The pitch changes without you wanting it to. So it's kind of a mess, but I think it, you know, sounds pretty cool. And it's something, if you're building an instrument, you can sort of add this in the mix uh, for only a couple bucks. So um, experiment, check out the schematics. You can add a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, play more with the CMOS chips and making different kinds of sequences. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, you can hook this up to the sequencer that I made in the last tutorial. Um, and that the sequence could be changing the pitch of the sample. There's a lot that you can do with this, this cheap little crappy chip. So have fun. Woo! Woo!